I'm Dr. Biagi, and this is your Musicology Smackdown. All I want to do is turn it off. Why? This week, Sheryl Crow releases a new album, 100 Miles from Memphis, and I, for one, wish it were 100 miles below the Earth's crest. Crow is a folky, rocky, poppy singer-songwriter and former arn candy of Lance Cancer Is My Bitch Armstrong. The only redeeming quality of her music, in my opinion, is that at some point I will be dead and no longer a part of the world in which such sounds were ever able to thrive. Crow was born in Kennett, Missouri, which is, incidentally, the 100 miles from Memphis that the album refers to. Before becoming a professional musician, Crow was an elementary school teacher, causing elementary students in Fenton, Missouri to wonder at what point cutting up blow for your roadies was going to figure into their higher education. To gain recognition in her early years as a musician, Crow wrote commercial jingles. She said that she once made $40,000 on a jingle for McDonald's. That's funny, I once made 40 k for McDonald's too, after contracting hepatitis from a tainted McNugget. But clearly she was destined for greater things, though in 1992 her self-titled debut album was scrapped, thus confirming that apparently one person with half a brain and some small shred of musical integrity was working at her record label in 1992. Crow's breakthrough album was 1993's Tuesday Night Music Club, featuring hit songs like All I Want to Do, Strong Enough, and Leaving Las Vegas. Shortly after the runaway success of the album, one of Crow's collaborators on the record, her former boyfriend Kevin Gilbert, was found dead in his apartment. Now, the album was bad, but dude, there are other reasons to live. Sheesh. After that, Crow released her self-titled second album, with songs about abortion, homelessness, and nuclear war. You know, when I hear her sing, I'm inspired to think about nuclear holocaust, too. The lead single, If It Makes You Happy, It Can't Be That Bad, was probably the mantra Crow repeated to herself daily in order to produce this album. Though I will concede that one is kind of catchy. Subsequent projects included collaborations and covers, as well as a song allegedly inspired by the time she boned Eric Clapton, My Favorite Mistake. I think his favorite mistake was likely the 10-hour erection he must have gotten from the Viagra he needed to take in order to make that one happen. In the late 90s, she released a live album called Sheryl Crow and Friends, live from Central Park, which included the track There Goes the Neighborhood. As a proud native New Yorker, that sounds about right. At around the same time, Crow became heavily involved with the Scleroderma Research Foundation, which helps hairless albinos treat depression or something. Whatever, Google it yourselves. Later activism included her writing the foreword to the book Crazy Sexy Cancer, because apparently cancer is crazy and sexy. No wonder she dated Lance Armstrong until he went into remission. In 2008, Crow released Detours, which featured the single Love is Free. And love is free for just $1.29 on iTunes. 100 Miles from Memphis is her seventh studio album and allegedly a tribute to the soul music of her youth. Crow claims that artists such as Otis Redding, Wilson Pickett, Al Green, and Aretha Franklin shaped the sound of the album, none of which is in any way apparent on any of the jangly faux-funk tracks. It features songs such as Summer Day, Eye to Eye, and Stop. Well, maybe Crow should. This is Dr. Biagi saying, if it makes you happy, it can be that bad. So turn it down. Hey.